I've made one X, and now I have Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, four days to make another. Smaller one, easier, but still. And to make it more interesting, I decided that it needed to be Damascus. So, it's time to get started. 11 layers, 1084, and 15N20. Clean the pieces, stack them up, weld them together, put a handle on it, and then throw it in the fire. We're gonna be moving pretty fast here because there is a lot to do. Don't forget your flux, and it's time to get this welded. Three passes, fluxing each time and brushing often to make sure it is fully welded together. And you'll see there's a little uh, weirdness in the edge there due to the layers being slightly different widths. So I'm gonna grind that off before going back into the heat and stretching this thing way out. We're gonna be pulling this out to about three times its length. Now you'll notice I've dropped all the sound out here and that's because the sound of a sped up press sounds absolutely terrible. Especially now. I mean, it's just bad. But watch this thing get so much longer. It's really neat to do. You wanna go fast, but you don't wanna go too aggressive and overdo it and over warp the pattern. But the changes to the pattern are gonna come in part from just how the steel gets moved slightly different in slightly different places. So it's all right. Now we're going really fast. Okay, we just wanna get this done. This took hours. And there you go, about three times its length. It's cool, you can see the different way the two different metals oxidize. You can see the pattern on the side. Look at that. Hey, okay, take the handle off. We're going to clean off the scale, make the surfaces nice, mark it into three pieces, cut it, stack it, and weld it. So we've taken that 11 layers and turned it into 33. Three welding passes. And then stretch it out to about twice its length. Oh. I have no idea how those guys in Fortune Fire do Damascus and a finished quenched knife in three hours. Clean it up, cut it in half, this time just in half because I'm going to sandwich in three more layers, two more 15N20 and one more 1084 to be the core of this billet. Why does that look so tasty though? Forbidden snack, do not eat. After letting it cool down, I'm gonna clean up the inclusions that I get on the edges here. I probably could have more carefully assembled the billet to avoid this, but I have more material than I need, so I'm just gonna grind it away, make sure these welds are nice and solid. Yes, I'm sure they are, and I don't need to go back in and do any more welding. I'm gonna cut it off the handle, get it cleaned up, and go to the ferric chloride to do just a really quick etch. And even with just that brief etch, look how pretty that already looks. That is cool. A brick. Let's see. Four and a half. Two and three quarters. One and a half. I nipped a little bit off here to help keep this core of 1084 more centered so this can be the edge. With the billet prepared, now it's time to actually forge the accent. And I don't really have the right tooling set up for this. I've never even done this process before. This is only my third axe. And I know that. There are a few things I know I could have stopped and built that would have really helped. But I wanted to try it with what I could make shift with what I had to see what I was really going to need to build. You know, there's only so much you can guess at. So seeing the things that didn't go quite how I wanted, and then the work I had to do to fix those problems, is going to inform the tools I build in the future to do this better. Here I'm trying to pull the metal out into sort of an L shape, and because I don't have a way to do an offset forging on the press, it doesn't quite go right. The part I draw out ends up more centered, and I'm going to have to fight that for the rest of the process. So before I deal with drifting the eye, I need to deal with this fish mouth on the back. 
So once we put the eye in, it'll be really hard to smack on that without just distorting the eye. Now the fish mouth came from the way I forged it when I used the round die on one side and the flat on the other. It moved that material on one side faster. You can see that, which is neat. And even if I did have the right setup for doing the offset forging I wanted to do, you probably would still have gotten this. So with that corrected, I can move on now to punching the eye. And that went pretty smoothly. The one real issue is I think I used the wrong kind of punch. I'm using my round punch that I use for hammers here, and because the eye on an axe really wants to be sort of a, a elongated teardrop shape, I probably should have used something more rectangular, you know, a slot punch. You can see me using the charcoal dust here to help the punch not get stuck as I'm punching the eye, which works very well. You gotta use a good amount. I actually came up with a better process for this on the hammer I made after the axe. If you quench off your punch every time, which you should be doing, and keep it wet, you can actually just stick it right into the charcoal dust bucket and it'll pick up enough. You don't have to put it down and then throw the dust and pick it up again. The slug didn't quite fall out on its own, so pull that out and let's get drifting. Yeah. That is probably the single biggest mistake in the whole process. Because it had to stretch so far to make that teardrop shape, a lot of the material that I was going to try to draw down into the cheeks is gone. It's forward and backward now. And it warped a whole lot. So for doing that step, I probably want something with more support around the bottom edge to keep it nice and flat. From there on out, it's chasing those problems back and forth. Thinning it out a little bit too much to try to get straight again, and then it warping on me a little bit as I work the eye. Just chasing my tail a bit. So, I do it in stages. I go back and forth and move over to just forging out the rest of the shape. All the while, I need to make sure I keep the center core of 1084 right in the middle. So I have to work it evenly on both sides, or it's going to show up in the pattern. It may not have been the smartest pattern to choose for the first time doing this process, because anything I do wrong will show up in where the lines go. Oh well, it's fine. I'm using the round dies here to stretch the eye vertically, making it taller, so it'll be more secure on the handle and just the way I want it to be shaped. And I'm noticing I should definitely make another set of dies that is just the rounding dies. The flat one kind of gets in the way here, I really would have liked to have left the hammerhead wider there. I also tried it with some handwork. Sometimes it's more fun and sometimes it can be more effective, especially as the metal gets thinner. But in this case, I wasn't really fond of the marks that the cross peen was leaving. Mm, it's better with a much wider cross peen, which I don't have. So perhaps one of those would be worth adding to my uh, array of tools. With the eye sorted, it's time to draw out the rest of the blade. Making sure I work both sides evenly, keeping the pattern nice and centered, I'm trying to pull the material forward and thin it down, and also pull it downwards to create the bearded shape. And that's where I'm running into the last big problem of forging this axe. The material spreads in both directions, up and down. So I gotta try to get it pulled around. Some handwork in the vise. Quite a few heats there. Does do a lot of work. Pulls it around a bunch. Mostly just upsets that material along the top. And that's key. That actually helps later. 
look at the bottom of the eye there. Well, that's really the top. Oh, crunched it. But it did bend the material around a lot. So, one step forward, two steps back, I guess. But a little bit more work onto the press, a little bit work by hand, and we'll get there. What I work out in the end is drawing out the upset material along the top edge, and that kicks it around enough. With that more or less figured out, I spent some time brushing and smoothing out the steel, do a lot of little hammer blows to really clean up the forging. I'm going to be moving to the grinding after this, once it's, you know, as straight as I need to get it and all that. And you might think it's a little soon for that, but because it's Damascus, because there's a lot of layers that are parallel to the surface, I want to grind down into it. That will reveal the pattern that is currently parallel to the surface, and uh, some of that will come from grinding down those <clears throat> uh, rougher forging marks. At some point I'm going to figure out how to make that actually interesting. Until then, I'll probably just keep skipping most of the grinding. Pretty pleased with that. Now we heat the axe up three times and let it cool down three times. Those are three normalization cycles to improve the grain structure of the metal. And then we're going to heat it back up and get ready for the quench. Upon request, the first words for this axe are, And a pirate's life for me! Arr, arr, arr. Ooh, this looks good. Very nice. Seems good to me. Time to get this all cleaned up now, isn't it? And so clean it up I did. Now tempering it with my acetylene torch, I'm putting a differential temper on it, softer at the eye, harder near the edges. I do a full two hour temper cycle in my oven later at home, but this'll do it for now, so I don't destroy it if I drop it. Do a little extra work just to make sure the edge is in full alignment. Just a little careful. Take a bit off, check it, rinse and repeat. It's no perfect mirror, but boy is it shiny. My touch mark on the back here, a little trash panda face. That should leave that one area not etched. So let's toss this in some acid. Does anybody know if there's a way to filter, like a recommended way to filter your ferric chloride? Because mine's looking pretty gnarly these days. Probably should get some new stuff soon. Let's see what we got. Whoa. Look at that. How's that for a called shot? 1084, right on the edge. Runs right down the middle, right to the edge. Deviates a little in the back, just a bit. Shoo! You know? I can live with that. Oh yeah. I'd say that's pretty good. So 
So with that all polished up, now I just need to make a handle. And frankly, making the handle, along with doing the grinding and the sanding, is one of those things I just don't really have a good way to show. So I'm not going to record it. It's making a handle. I'm going to cut it out, and then round it off, and smooth it. Yeah. I need a GoPro or something. Because what I'm looking at is interesting, but it's very difficult to... Anyway, be right back. Everything has dust on it. Here you go. One mid-range sized bish... I got him tired. Axe handle! Nice fit. So yeah, just a little burny action. Doyle. Wedge, glue. Boop -a -doo. So that about wraps it up. I am just intensely pleased with how this turned out. Pretty damn good for a third axe. First to max cuss. So thank you all for continuing to watch and support me. Contact me via my website. Support me on Patreon if you like. I hope you're all doing well in these troubled times, and I'll catch you next time.